Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at the Mac, but not really. We're going to take a look at Mac Envy and what you can do about it in Windows 11. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Threat. And this week, we're going to look at a, a semi-controversial topic. This is something that has kind of dogged Windows users, I mean, honestly, from the beginning. But um, it really picked up steam uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, Steve Jobs came back to Apple. They were pushing Mac OS X with all its graphical effects. Later, they released the Mac Book Air, which especially the second-gen version, iconic. Um, we've always felt, you know, on the Windows side, uh, like second-class citizens in some ways. Um it's gotten better over time. You know, we Windows Vista and then Windows 7 especially kind of picked up those graphical effects like we saw on the Mac. And with Windows 11, we have this interface that's simple and mobile-like, and it's not too horrible. But now Apple is pushing forward with this thing called Liquid Glass, which you can see here. This is the, the Mac rendition. So the Mac desktop, you have a transparent menu bar by default. Now at the top, you've got these transparent widgets on the desktop, and you have a transparent dock down here at the bottom. So... This has triggered uh, kind of a second round of, or maybe a third or fifth round or whatever the number is of Mac Envy. So what can we do on the Windows side to alleviate this Envy, right? So the first step, which is nothing to do with software, it would be to get a Snapdragon X-based Windows 11 on ARM PC, like the Surface laptop that I use and love, but there are many choices. A lot of them are under $1,000. So uh, that will give you the kind of Mac hardware-like look and feel, but also the performance, efficiency, battery life, et cetera, uh, over and above what we typically get on an X64 Windows PC. But from a software perspective, one of the big features in the Mac that I love is this thing here, Spotlight Search. And so Spotlight Search on the Mac is, it's the command key on the Mac keyboard, but command key plus space. So similar to Alt plus space, or maybe Windows key plus space on Windows, and they're improving this feature dramatically in uh, the latest version of Mac OS 10, or Mac OS, sorry, they don't call it that anymore. Um, so as it turns out, we've actually had this feature on Windows. It's not in Windows, it's not part of Windows, but Microsoft makes this free suite of utilities, we've talked about a bunch, called Power Toys, and Power Toys is available for free, you can get it in the store. Um, and one of its many utilities is something called Power Toys Run, which has recently been replaced by something called Command Palette. And so by default, both of those utilities, depending on what you choose, you would probably go forward to Command Palette at this point, use the Alt plus Spacebar keyboard shortcut. I don't like that because I use that for something else. So I remap that uh, in the utility itself to Windows key plus space. So when I do that here, you will see an interface very much like that thing I just showed on the Mac, um, the Spotlight Search feature. So it works the same way. Um, you can search for apps. Of course, that would be the most co uh, common thing or other commands, search for files. It's extensible, so apps can plug into this and so forth. You can search the web. And in many ways, this is kind of a start menu replacement, frankly, if you don't mind typing a little bit, right? And so if I wanted to run something like Notepad, I could just type Notepad and hit Enter. I could click on it here and Eventually, Notepad will run because <laughs> nothing works on this computer. Um, so there you go. So th that is very much like Spotlight. And Spotlight and the new version is also breaking it out into uh, different UIs for different types of search results. And it's extensible. And they're really kind of paralleling each other at this point. So that's kind of interesting. So the Mac also has a full screen mode that I love. And we don't really have that in windows anymore we kind of used to remember in windows 8 but we don't anymore um, with the exception of some apps like if i bring up um uh, any web browser really but in this case uh, microsoft edge you can see it kind of runs you know it does it runs in this full screen mode but um by and large we don't have full screen mode so there are workarounds for this so for example if i go to taskbar settings and go down into behaviors I can automatically hide the taskbar. And when I do that, what if the window is maximized, which isn't typically the same thing as full screen, it essentially becomes full screen in the sense that it is taking up the entire screen. Um, and that could be any window. So if I bring up store, um, it will do the same thing. And when you mouse down to the bottom, obviously the taskbar comes and goes. And honestly, <laughs> ever since uh, 
the first beta of Mac OS 10, 26 came out, I've, I've been using Windows like this um, just to try it. And I've actually really started to like it. Um, there's just a couple of problems. So uh, the big one for me is you don't realize how much you miss something until it's gone. And in this case, what I missed was I was looking to see the time in the corner here, right? Which in the taskbar a lot which I now know because when it's gone, I look down there and there's nothing there. So I started researching whether there would be some kind of utility that might um, make up for that. And what I found, there's not much oddly, but what I found was something called DS Clock. And DS Clock is um, a utility that, it's right here, uh, I'll put it up here. I usually leave it on the bottom, but um, and you can configure how it looks. Uh, however you want, but as you can see, it has the date and the time. Um, I've turned off a bunch of features. I've also really uh, changed how this thing is formatted by default. You can, this can look like anything. It doesn't have to be transparent. It doesn't have to be these colors, etc. cetera. Um, I did set it to be always on top. So if I bring up, uh, like say Microsoft Edge, you can see that it is sitting there over there. So I'll, I'll always see the time and the date, no matter what I'm doing. Um, I usually actually leave it down here. I've kind of played with this a bunch, but if um, let me bring up the taskbar, yeah, it's hard to do that at the same time. But um, once it gets there's a little grab handle here, you can bring it up like that. So it's this is a little rough, but it's usually right about there. So, okay, that's fine. That's not something that's on the Mac per se, but on the Mac, of course, they have that menu at the top and now it's transparent. And uh, the dock has always, or has offered, transparency of some kind for a long time. Uh, and we don't really have that here. So the taskbar, I'm hiding it, but it's also opaque. So as it turns out, there is a utility for that as well. And this is free and it's in the store. It's called Translucent TB for taskbar. And when you run this, I'm hiding the taskbar here, so it's hard to see, obviously. But when I mouse down, you can see the icons here. You can't see this very well, but that's because of a display issue. If you reboot or just log in, log out, or log out, log in, uh, this will become clear again, um, where you can see all the elements very clearly. Um, but this is kind of nice because this mimics in some ways the way that the Mac OS dock works, right? So if I, again, if I bring up a full screen app, which is really a maximized app, and I mouse down, now it kind of gives you that effect. You don't get the, you know, the animations and so forth, but, um, but you know, it, that's not, that's not horrible. Um, if you want to go further than this, um, you can go to other utilities. Uh, Starbuck, Star <laughs> Doc makes a paid utility called Windows Blinds, which has been around for over 20 years. And one of the things that it does is allow you to have this kind of Windows 7 style transparent glass effect or translucent, depending on how you want to configure it. Um, I didn't install that on this computer. As you can probably tell, I'm already having enough problems with this thing today, but um, but this is, uh, it's not super expensive. If this is, if you love this interface and you want that kind of glass effect, um, definitely uh, give this a try. But I find that I actually like the kind of opaque uh, style that we have here today in Windows 11. Um, but I do also kind of, you know, I've gotten very used to hiding the taskbar. I do like that kind of maximized window is now sort of a full screen window effect. I like having... Uh, the clock down here. So it's not exactly right. But again, with um, with these utilities, most of which are free, all the ones I'm using here are free. So DS Clock, which you uh, can Google and find pretty easily, um, uh, Translucent Taskbar, Translucent TB, available in the store, and then Power Toys with um, uh, the Command Palette, also free and in the store. Um, you know, it's it's pretty much the big bucket stuff. And then you have the advantage of using windows and I, I find it to be uh, much more logical and have better uh, and more consistent multitasking and so forth. And so um, I don't personally suffer from Mac envy, but if you do, maybe this can help. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful and instructive and possibly entertaining watching me flail around a little bit today, but uh, thank you so much for watching. We will have a new episode of hands on windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you especially to our Club Twit members. We love you. If you don't support Club Twit yet, please consider doing so. Um, you can find out more about this program at twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thanks. I'll see you next week.